Hi friends, today in this lecture I will be talking about the different types of medical errors. So one type of medical error is a diagnostic error. These are errors or delays in the diagnosis, right? So either we made the wrong diagnosis or we made the right diagnosis but not in a timely fashion. Then this could result in diagnostic errors. And this can result from a failure to use indicated test in the diagnosis of a particular condition or using outmoded tests or outmoded therapies that are no longer standard of care. Diagnostic errors can also result from a failure to act on results of monitoring and testing, right? So you send off a lab for a patient who you are concerned has an infection. The lab comes back indicated that there is elevated blood cell count, white blood cell count and maybe a shift but no one checked those results, right? Several hours go by because they are busy, they are doing other things and the patient does not get timely initiation of antibiotics, right? So it's a very simple example of where you can have a delay in diagnosing your patient and starting treatment followed by we have treatment errors. So here, we actually make the right diagnosis, but then our subsequent course of action, there's a failure, right? So either we don't do something right with an intervention or procedure, you know, maybe we give the wrong medications, but the execution of the treatment of that patient, there's a failure. Another type of medical error could be considered a preventive error, right? So here, in this type of error, there is a failure to provide a prophylactic treatment. So an example here might be, we are seeing a patient who is coming in for migraines and might be the first time that patient is seeing this clinician. And what the clinician does is, they do a full detailed history and physical, obviously focusing on the chief complaint, which is the migraines, right? And in that history, they identify that the patient actually has a pretty significant family history for breast cancer but then they only focus on the migraine and they never follow up on that breast cancer risk and maybe they don't talk to the patient about high risk screening or any other preventive actions and then in the future the patient develops a breast cancer that may have been prevented earlier right so that's just one example of a failure in prevention all right so this is one way of thinking about errors another way that i want you to know that's really been used quite extensively in the study of patient safety is categorizing errors in terms of slips lapses or mistakes so i want to define what these are so first we start with a slip so what is a slip a slip can be thought about as an action that's not carried out as intended or planned, right? So one example might be that you meant to give this medication subcutaneously and for some reason you got distracted and you accidentally gave that medication via IV. You gave it intravenously. And this type of error called slips, these are observable, right? You can see that action was not carried out as planned. Whereas, lapses are missed actions or omissions, right? So things that you should have done but you did not do. For example, this might be forgetting to follow up on a serum potassium in a patient who's been treated with furosemide for acute congestive heart failure. And you don't necessarily observe a lapse because you can't see that someone forgot to do something, right? And now there's mistakes. Mistakes are a very specific type of error that's brought about by a faulty plan or an incorrect intention, right? In case of a slip, the individual knows that he's doing the right thing, but due to some reasons, he did the wrong attention. Whereas in a lapse, the individual forgot to do something that you knew you were supposed to do or that he was intended to do and and that intention was right in slips as well as lapses in mistakes it's completely different see a mistake is that you just had the wrong impression right 
so the intended action was not the correct one for that scenario this might be that the individual intentionally go to extubate a patient that he thinks the patient is ready to be extubated but actually he is misinterpreted or misapplied the extubation guidelines right and he thought that the patient was doing better than they actually were and he take out that tube from the patient and due to that error again the patient needs to have reintubation and the patient is going to suffer from anoxic injury due to this mistake error in this scenario another example might be you are treating a patient who you think has pneumonia so you are doing all the right things for pneumonia but pneumonia is not at all the real diagnosis you have actually misdiagnosed the patient and the patient actually have a pulmonary embolism that would require a completely different treatment than pneumonia so those are mistakes and these mistakes are very different from slips or lapses so i find this little figure helpful if you want to break up errors into these three categories you have your slips of action you have your lapses of memory and then you have mistakes which are based on either a lack of knowledge or misdiagnosis and again that's a separate category of errors now it is very important to differentiate these errors these slips lapses and mistakes from violations right violations are not really considered errors so what are violations these are deliberate actions where someone does something and knows that it's against the rules right now they might have good intentions but still what they are doing is a deliberate violation of a policy or a standard so what might be an example here you might be treating a patient and you are getting page to address another issue and instead of doing the full physical exam you kind of cut some corners right and then you miss something that should have been diagnosed or you want to treat a patient with a medication you don't have time to pull up their file to go through their list of other medications and allergies and again you treat them and it turns out that they have a drug drug reaction right so those are all things where it was not really a mistake or slip or a lapse but there was a deliberate violation away from protocol or best practice or standard of care now i wants to talk about adverse events or near misses see these are the harms or injuries that resulted directly from medical care and again you need to differentiate this adverse event from just having a bad outcome which is from patient's disease but not from medical care you need to differentiate that so if a patient has a lung cancer or a myasthenia gravis and they just have a natural progression disease that leads to a bad outcome obviously and that's not an adverse event in that sense that we are talking here i mean that's obviously that's not a great outcome for the patient but that's just the natural course of disease in this context of medical errors an adverse event is when the harm or injury is a direct result none of the patient's diagnosis but of our medical care right now i want to talk about near misses see near misses are errors that occur so it might be a slip might be a lapse it might be a mistake but fortunately it does not actually results in any injury or a harm to the patient either because the error is caught in time or you just get lucky now near misses are just as important to report and study right because just because we got lucky this time or caught the error before it actually caused any patient harm the next time it happens to you or someone else you may not be so fortunate right so the study of patient safety says that certainly adverse event but also near misses needs to be reported to the system and needs to be studied so that again we can learn how to improve the care for the future all right so i want to go back to diagnostic errors because i want to explore this a little bit more you know these diagnostic errors one study they are thought to account for at least 17% of preventable errors in hospitalized patients right and there's different category systems here 
there's no fault diagnostic errors, system based errors and cognitive errors. I will just elaborate on a little bit more. So no fault errors occur when something is masked or you know it's an unusual symptom of disease or maybe when the patient is not fully cooperated and care, right? So not your typical error that can be attributed to just human error on the part of the clinician. But there was some contributing factor here and that's considered kind of no fault, right? This could happen to anybody and it's a different scenario. Followed by system related errors. System related errors are errors when something in the environment, so maybe technical failure, maybe you are going to do a cardiac defibrillation, but the defibrillator does not work, right? And that's a different type of error. It's an equipment problem or maybe some kind of organizational flaw. Then comes cognitive errors. Cognitive errors, I want to spend a little bit time here. These results from a diagnostic that was wrong, that was missed or that was unintentionally delayed due to clinician error. So let's explore that one a little further, right? Okay. Cognitive errors can be categorized by different biases, right? These are ways in which we have learned to interpret the world around us and to approach problems. Usually when we have these kind of protocols or mental cognitive algorithms, they are to our advantage, right? So when I see a patient with diffuse abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting and tenderness, I mean, I have an algorithm for the different surgical pathologies that could be involved there. Sometimes, though these algorithms actually work against us and these biases actually lead us to make a cognitive errors in judgment and diagnosis. And I will give you some common examples here. So the first one I want to talk about is called anchoring bias. So what does that mean? This is when the clinician makes the wrong diagnosis because they are holding on to a particular diagnosis and they become really dismissive or insensitive to other signs and symptoms that would point to an alternate diagnosis. So let me give you an example and make a little bit more clear. A 65 year old man presents with epigastric pain and emesis and sits leaning forward. And the patient has a history of alcohol abuse. So the patient most likely is going to be diagnosed with pancreatitis based on some of the protocols and algorithms that the clinician have. But if we hold on to this diagnosis to the exclusion of anything else in a differential diagnosis, we might miss the fact that Despite the history of alcohol abuse, the patient actually denies using alcohol for several years. And then we might downplay the fact that our pancreatic enzymes came back normal and kind of missed the fact that there was an abnormal EKG. Okay, Because again, we are kind of anchored on that initial diagnosis of what was must be pancreatitis, right? And by doing that, we actually missed the diagnosis of cardiac event being the cause of the patient's presentation, okay? So that would be an anchoring error. This is one type of cognitive error. Another cognitive error or cognitive bias is a confirmation bias. And this is somewhat similar to the anchoring bias, but it has slightly different figures. We will go through this here. So this is where you're actually looking for evidence, specifically to support a preconceived opinion, rather than looking at the evidence objectively and clearly exploring your other diagnosis and your differential. Okay, so again, this may accompany an anchoring error, right? So as clinician, it's important that as we are getting information back, that data, especially if there's conflicting data that we don't kind of select out the information that we want to see because it goes along with our preconceived opinion and then downplay information that does not fit into that. So you can kind of see how the anchoring and the confirmation bias will go together in that example with a patient with suspected pancreatitis, right? And that actually had a cardiac event. You can see how these two things play into that error. All right, let's go on to the next one that is Availability bias. This is a tendency that people have to assume a diagnosis based on a recent patient or a very memorable case. So, for example, a resident in pediatrics been seeing patients in emergency department 
and then he sees a patient coming in with cough and fever and again because of that availability right because they have been seeing all these patients with the flu he automatically diagnoses the patient with flu and he sends the patient home so he does not do the full workup and he misses the fact that this patient actually had a bacterial pneumonia and should have been treated with antibiotics right so this would be an example of availability bias so what's really important here is to kind of maintain your objectivity and to make sure that you are making your diagnosis based on the information that's coming in and not based on this preconceived notion so it's estimated that thousands of hospitalized patients each year they die due to diagnostic errors from these cognitive biases and again it leads to missed or delayed diagnosis and this is seen a lot for instance in patients with cancer and are also a very prominent reason for malpractice claims this together with the poor teamwork and poor communication between clinicians a lack of reliable systems really compound the impact that these errors have on patients right this is the end of my lecture on the different types of errors if you really like this lecture please do share this lecture with your friends and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please do that we meet in the next lecture with a new concept till then stay tuned have a nice day